Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 19, Thoughts. This episode is called The Only Light in the Darkness. Another episode I love. This video will contain spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. There will be no spoilers for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after Strikers. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, we catch back up with Marcus, who we saw be freed from the fridge. And, yeah, you know, an electricity-based villain. Very cool. And we overhear a little of a political debate where one of them says, you know, you wouldn't be saying that if we... If, if your political power was in charge, to which the other responds, if my party was in charge, we wouldn't be in this situation, which, yeah, that is a very accurate representation of American political debates by, you know, in, in mainstream media. And... Yeah, uh, good use of flashbacks in this episode. And Ward, of course, claims that Garrett is dead, which will definitely make it easier for Garrett to carry out, uh, yeah, if they're not looking for him. <laughs> I like the trip in, in cer certain areas, knows as much as Fitz, and Fitz can't really handle it. He, he feels like... Trip is making him look bad in front of Simmons, and we're starting to see that, you know, he has feelings for her beyond just, like, respecting her, you know, as a, as a really gifted scientist. Let's see, and I, I like the cut from... The, the words you'll have to go through orientation to this chair that, you know, I suppose you can use for, for like, lie detecting. I, looks very intense for, you know, something that amounts to, like, probing your mind. Looks like something you'd use to, like, punish someone. So, yeah. And there are 96 variables. And yeah, we learn that Trip is the descendant of a howling commando. Um, what's the word? You know, which I feel like was that his. Oh no, never mind. It was it was Kane. There was a Koenig on the Howling Commandos in the comics, and let's see. Yeah, I I quite like the montage of the team members giving their answers, and you know the detail that fits like very quickly answers. You know the the thing he can't live without is Simmons. Simmons does not give that answer. You know, she doesn't hear him say that, but, you know, it's a good contrast there. I really hope they don't do the thing where he's, like, friend-zoned or just such a nice guy or some. Yeah, we'll see. And, yeah, then Ward has to go in, and, you know, for a while it goes fine, and, you know, he says, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, the, I'm sure it fluctuates. There's, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain. You know, I'm, only when I breathe am I in pain. And, you know, the thing with, you know, when he says, you know, I am devoted to S.H.I.E.L.D. and there's fluctuation and the gun comes out, I'm going to ask you again. You know, and, you know, even, like, yeah, really readies the gun. And he asks, are you Hydra? Which, 
you know, of course, you know, and, and yeah, that's going to be very difficult for Ward to, to lie about when facing the lie detector. But, you know, he tries to say, you know, oh, yeah, you know, everyone in S.H.I.E.L.D. is, since we were infiltrated by Hydra, but that's not good enough. And Koenig asks again, and the, the, you know, he's, yeah, why did you really come back? And he says, I came back for Sky, which is, you know, that's true, and it's just that Koenig believes, oh, like, for love, rather than, you know, I need her to unlock the, the hard drive. And we see that he had, like, this nail in in his finger to, to better manipulate the, you know, the lie detector. And we did see a couple of times where it would cut to, like, and he would be doing something with his finger. So that was, yeah. Either that or he was planning on taking over the the plane from Con Air, one or the other. Very cool to see Amy Acker again. Um, yeah, always happy to see her pop up in stuff. And I like the thing, you know, Marcus you know, recognizes Colson and he's like, you put me away. They did things to me. And, you know, we are practically saying along with Colson, yeah, they were trying to make you better. But then he flips it and says, no, they made me stronger. <laughs> Which, yeah, that... Considering that there were Hydra people in S.H.I.E.L.D., I can see how that, you know, they were lining him up to be a weapon. And... Yeah. Sky learns that Koenig is tracking them. And I... I it's cute when, when she, you know... She, she like takes her, drops it, and there's like an alarm, and he's like, oh, that's "Very funny, you know that." Yeah, it was. It was very funny, and I quite like the detail that you know. So Sky learns that, but when Ward enters the room, Koenig surreptitiously covers the the tracking, you know, win window thing, the the tablet. I guess it is. So, you know, closer to the end of the episode, when she's, like, looking for Koenig, he has no idea that there is that, you know, and it's like, if she's just going around looking for Koenig, it's gonna take ages, you know, it's a big bunker. Let's see. And, yeah, she wants to hack the NSA, which, holy crap. And we learn that Audrey doesn't believe what they've been saying about this government agency being corrupt, which... Holy government propaganda, Batman. And... Yeah. You know, we, we come to realize Audrey Nathan is indeed the, the cellist. You know, I was wondering slash hoping that we would eventually meet her, that she'd get to be a character and not just this, you know, yeah, something for, for him to look sad about when talking about. And ultimately, she doesn't get to be that much of a character, but, you know, it is nice to see it from her side as well. At one point, she says, you know, before Coulson died, we were planning, you know, what, what was it she said? A trip to the to the coast or something like that. Is she talking about, did Coulson tell her that Tony Stark offered flying her to the, that's cool. I, I suppose I could see that. We didn't see Coulson every moment of that movie. And, yeah, Ward says he understands May lying. And, yeah, we learn that the, the Gamma technology is indeed, was indeed developed by Bruce Banner. Um, very tense scene when Audrey basically has to lure out. She's basically bait for Marcus. 
and yeah, so we have you know Ward and Sky seemingly connecting, and you know there's a kiss, and yeah, we you know he he tells Sky what you know we had already seen a little bit in flashback that his older brother forced Ward to be cruel to you know his his younger brother you know when they took the the ring cosplay way too far and yeah i quite like the cello playing over you know sky looking for Koenig and finding his dead body and it's and you know that thing oh there's there's blood and we learn yeah cuz you know from the from killing Koenig that's where the blood it's not his own blood and yeah just really really tense scene i thought that Chloe Bennett really knocked it out the park with the acting you know when she realizes you know as she helpfully reminds the audience when it comes back from commercial he's hydra you know just very very like she she goes through multiple stages of emotions because on the one hand it's shocking it's a betrayal but she also realizes she has to hide this because if he knows she knows you know, like, he'll probably torture her before he kills her, but she's definitely going to die. And the torture would also be bad. And... Am I the only one who, when when we see several of the team members fire the, the device to stop Marcus thought, don't cross the streams? That was a, a legitimately very nicely done tense scene. You know, he manages to fight back, even though at first it looks, yeah. And yeah, Sky does manage to convince Ward that she doesn't know anything, but you know, he forces her to go with on the on the bus, and you know, there. He explains, you know, we we need the, uh, you know, you need to, yeah. As she realizes, you need me to unlock the hard drive, which, you know, she was wondering why is, you know, why hasn't he killed me yet? What does he need me for? And that comes out. And, of course, Ward realizes if he isolates her, if he gets her on the bus, which, you know, no one shield knows about the whereabouts of the bus if they did they would you know have have sent I, I don't know if they would go themselves or they would tell Glenn Talbot where to go but you know one of those and yeah really excellent cliffhanger and we the post credit scene is May with you know, M.M. with her M.U.M., and they are going to go for M.H., or Maria Hill, which, yeah, um, very tense. You know, May doesn't thank her right away, and now it's too late. But, yeah, really, really psyched to see what's going to happen next. You know, Sky knows, Ward doesn't know that Sky knows, but she doesn't have a lot of weapons training. I'm not sure. She doesn't really have. She doesn't have a gun. She'd have to get one. Do they? St I guess they maybe store guns on the plane. Even yeah, yeah. They 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 do. You know. So, but yeah. There's a there's a couple of ways it could go. Yeah. Very very cool. Right, and in this episode, uh, Fitz does have the chance to confess his feelings to Simmons, but he can't, you know, yeah. And Ward, like, points out, let's be honest, this is about you and Simmons, it's not actually about Trip, is it? And then Fitz is like, you must have a head injury, and, and Ward, you know, reverts to being his jerky self and and Fitz is like good to have you back I mean you really you were you were being mean to him it's it's 
yeah. A lot of stuff Ward has done I'm not making excuses for, but that, come on, Fitz, seriously. So, according to IMDb trivia for this episode, Amy Acker is a skilled dancer, but not a cellist. In order to make her cello playing realistic, she trained with a cello coach to fake three brief pieces of music composer Barry McCreary wrote for the scene. He then had to alter the music after shooting in order to synchronize the soundtrack with her hand movements. And Marcus Daniels, the, the character is known as Blackout. He's from Nova issue 19, 1978. Great by Marv Wolfman, Carmine Infantino, and Tom Palmer. Very cool. And. Right, and yeah, Amy Acker and J. August Richards, who plays Mike Peterson, previously starred in another Joss Whedon TV series, Angel. And. Yeah, and this is one of those cases, you know, Clark Gregg and Amy Acker previously played Uncle and Niece in Much Ado About Nothing in 2012. So, yeah. It wasn't a huge amount of time between the the them playing family and them playing lovers. So that's yeah. Creepy, but they you know, they were convincing. Let's see. Huh. I have to admit, I didn't even realize Joss Whedon directed a um, Shakespeare adaptation. But yeah, there it is. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Right, and Amy Acker later co starred in Gifted, The, the Gifted, Fox show, Fox show based in the X Men universe. And oh, huh. Um, Marcus Daniels. I don't know if that's. Let's just say Marcus. Um, yeah, Marcus Daniels chronologically first appeared briefly in another MCU thing. Which, huh? Okay then. Oh, and um, Sai Chin, who plays May's mother, is one of a rare few actresses who have played a Bond girl more than once. Um, let's see. You Only Live Twice and Casino Royale. And, uh, yeah, and the ABC Television Network has had a long-standing TV broadcast arrangement with the Bond franchise in the past. So, yeah. Uh, and that's the newer Casino Royale, not the old one. Um, which I want to say I heard was like a parody. Um, and I think that might be everything that... Right, and the, yeah, the, the IMDb quote section has some, some great lines from the episode, such as the, you know, what is in the box bit, which I do like, you know, May wants there to be a machete, Fitz says Simmons, uh, Simmons says the TARDIS, Sky <laughs> wants to say laptop. And, right, and, and yeah, Colson saying, nothing bad ever happens when you work with something called Dark Force. And, let's, right, and the, I also like the thing, you know, what's the difference between an egg and a rock? May is just like edible not Simmons and Fitz you know both say oh you know we could be here we'll be here all day if I start if I list all of them 
and Ward says, you know, one is food, one is a weapon. Let's see. And right, and we yeah, we learned that the lie detector was you know, supposed to be so amazing, even Romanoff couldn't beat it, and Fury wouldn't tell if she did or not. And... I think that might be... Right, and uh, yeah, I like that Tripp says he would have emptied the mag in Garrett. And, and I, yeah, I like that M Melinda's mother, Leon, you know, she's like, you're not going to take her out, are you? No, Mom, I just want to talk. Good. I've always liked Maria. You know, it's a, it's a very mom thing. It, it, you know, it goes from this super serious spy thing to this very mom thing, you know. Oh, she's one of my favorite of your friends kind of thing. Right, and I like the, the cut from, you know, we're leaving to Koenig saying, no, you're not, absolutely not, you can't leave. There are protocols. And... Yeah, and, and you know, Coulson says, you know, I want to be the shield that protects them, and Koenig says, moving speech, truly. Which I guess is them, the, the writers making fun of their own work, because that was one of the things he said during the big monologue in, I guess, was that the episode before this one? I think it might be. And... Let's see... I think... Right, and yeah... Um, Sky gave herself the name Sky. The the orphanage gave her the name Mary Sue Poots, which I guess maybe means they think she's related to Imogene Poots, which just like I get like family pride. I gotta say, if I if my family name was Poots, I would change it when I had kids. I would not want my kid to grow up with that name. Let's see. Right, and uh, yeah. Um, I've, the the bit with Coulson, like, over Audrey, like, saying, you know, you're safe, I'm still here, I promise, I'm still here with you. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. You know, some, some women do find that comforting, so I, I'll let that one go. Yeah, right, and I like the, you know, we're all cut from the same cloth, black Kevlar. And... Uh, let's see... Right, and yeah, Simmons fails to convince Audrey that they're CIA. And yeah, um, great episode. Really looking forward to seeing the resolution to the cliffhanger. And yeah, I like that we already get some follow up. You know, Garrett freed all these prisoners, saying this will keep Coulson busy. And, yeah, that is indeed what happened. Did they share a look briefly? Did Garrett know? He didn't say anything, but I guess it's possible they just wanted to keep it a surprise for this episode. But anyway, yeah. Um, the... the that is everything that I have for this episode. And yeah. Um, 
you know, it would be nice, but it's not really true that the CIA keep people safe. Of course, that's what I said, isn't it? The CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency people, 